Hi, this is Don Clark of FM Database Consulting and FileMakerProGurus.com. Today I'm going to show you a simple technique that uses an account name value list with autocomplete to assign the proper ID to an invoice record's foreign key. A good use for this technique would be to link an invoice to an account. There are other techniques out there to accomplish the same result, but I have a client that does not like to scroll through drop-down lists or pop-up value lists and is not patient enough to pop a new window, type and filter, and then choose from a list. He wanted the drop-down list to show the account name and to have the auto-complete feature turned on as well. This would allow him to just start typing the name, and when he had typed enough to filter out all but the correct name, just hit the Enter, Return, or Tab key to finish entering the name and linking the invoice to the account. Normally I would hide the foreign key behind the account name field on the invoice layout, and show just the account name and the value list as the second field. You can start typing and get the list filtered, but you have to type quickly or you'll lose your place. When you select the name, the value entered into the field is the foreign key, not the name. Setting up a value list this way with two fields disables the autocomplete button, and that's what my client wanted was autocomplete, so that would just type ahead and, and, and isolate the name without him having to scroll through the list. So here's my workaround. I use autocomplete drop-down list with the value list being derived from the account name field in the accounts table. As the user types, the correct name will eventually be isolated and the user will be, will, then will press enter, tab, or return and a script trigger is fired upon exiting the account name field. The script copies the exact account name from the field above, navigates to a blank account layout, enters find mode, finds the correct account record based off the name, saves the ID of that account name or record to a variable, returns to this particular starting layout, and then sets the foreign key to the ID account. Lookup values are automatically entered once the foreign key has been entered. There's a couple of caveats. Once you process an invoice, you should use security settings to prevent changes to the invoice. That would keep uh, users from inadvertently changing the account name. And this won't work well if you have duplicate account names, uh, but that's not a problem for my client, so we were able to go ahead and use this fairly simple technique. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. We'll click our Start button here, and you'll see we have a, a, a uh, invoice here. It's just a basic top here. We don't have line items. There's a little description down here. And uh, you can see if we click into here, it pulls up a list. Let's take a look over here first. We see we have an ID account 2395, and it's in White Plains, New York. So let's type ahead something, we'll say, with a, an F. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, feline business. If we, as we type ahead, you see we get the four letters, and it's isolated the name. We hit the tab key, and it's changed to an address in Detroit, Michigan. It's different account ID right here. Uh, we'll do that one more time with something from uh, K. So K-N-E-E, -E, and you can see I misspelled. And there's we could use the arrow key to finish that up, Keel or Neil computers, and it changes all the address and everything for you. Let's take a look at how that works. Right here, uh, we start with uh, freezing the window. We copy the account name's contents. It goes to the Get Active Field contents and grabs that name and it gets exactly that name, so we know that that field exists as an account in the accounts table. We go to a layout, and I call it a blank one, that way if a, a user gets stuck on there, let's go take a look real quick, uh, we just have a button to get them back to invoices if somehow they were to manage to stop this, this uh, triggered script trigger uh, from how, you know, in the middle of functioning, they could get back to where they started. So. We go back to here. Um, after we grab the, uh, the field contents, we put it into a variable called name. We go to the blank layout. We enter find mode. We do an, a, a find on the account name. We use a double equal to get it exact. And we, the value we're going to do is the uh, quote function surrounding the variable uh, name. And the reason we do that is because we want to isolate any double quotes or single quotes or other characters that might cause a problem when we do an exact find. We do a perform find after that, and then we set the variable ID to the accounts ID, go back to our original layout, and then set the fields, this was the invoice's ID, which is our foreign key, to the 
variable that we just picked up there, that we just made. Now normally you'd go to the next desired field, say the invoice date or the first line item or I don't know the term, something like that. And that in this instance, we're just staying right on here and, and letting it refresh. Let's go ahead and pull that back aside. And we'll do one more here. We'll just do a new record. And you can see it types in. We'll go with something with a B and we'll say bagpipe. And hit the return key and it pulls everything up the way we want it. And that's all there is to it. Thanks and I'll talk to you next time.